rotation of the inverse function is not f raised to negative 1, but it's just called f inverse. That's what it means. That's how we read it, f inverse. So we picked a um, problem 15 on page 321. We're asked to find the inverse function since it is 1 to 1, and here's our function. So I'm going to copy 2x plus 3 here. Step number one, replace f of x by y. I can always do that. f of x and y mean the same thing. Okay, so that's y equals 2x plus 3. In step two, so um, swap x and y. Why? Why am I allowed to do that? Here is y. So this is the function. So function f goes from x to y, but the function inverse will be applied to these values and return the original values. So these that were initially the output for, these numbers that were initially the output for f, they become the input for f inverse. That's why I'm allowed to swap. I see x, I see y, I put x. I see x, I put y. That's why I'm allowed to do that. Step three, I have to solve for, of course, for y, because now y becomes f inverse. I will subtract 3 and divide by 2. So I get that y equals x minus 3 divided by 2. Final step, step number 4, I just replace y by the notation f inverse. Replace y by f inverse of x equals x minus 3 over 2. Yes, yes, you can, absolutely. So you can write it indeed as f inverse, even as x over 2 minus 3 over 2, or you can write it as 1 over 2 times x minus 3 over 2, all are acceptable. Very good. Now, can you give me an example of two inverse functions? Simple ones. F of x, n uh, not g, I meant to write f inverse, of course, and f inverse. So if you want to give me two functions that you know, one will undo the other. I will give you an example and you'll give me another. So here is um, x plus 5. So to whatever I have, I'm adding 5. To undo that, I have x minus 5. Here's another example of two inverse functions. Let's say x divided by 2. Can anyone now for this example give us the f inverse? that will undo the operation of division by 2. To undo addition by 5, I had to subtract. To undo the division by 2, what will I have to do? What do you think? Multiply by 2. Very good. That's it. These are inverses of each other. Now, Choose which, which pair would you like to work with because I would like to determine the function composition and you'll see in a moment why I want to determine the function composition both ways. So you want to choose the first pair or you want to choose the second pair. We 
we want to determine the function composition and see what happens when we determine it. First or second? Anyone? Well, I'm going to choose the second one. So by definition, this is f of f inverse, which is f of twice x. And when I put twice x in here, because that's what I need to do, I get 2x over 2, and I simplify, and I get x. Let's see what happens with the other one when I have f inverse of f of x. So this is f inverse of f of x, which is x over 2. And now I have to plug it in this. So in f inverse, x becomes x over 2. So 2 times x over 2. I simplify again, and I get x. And this happens only if the two functions are inverses of each other. It's called the property of inverse functions. What is it? F comp F inverse and F inverse comp F will always have to equal X. Otherwise, the functions are not inverses of each other. So we checked. Indeed, those two functions were inverses of each other. So f comp f inverse, as well as f inverse comp f. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to write. Comp f, I'll correct in a minute, equals x. This is the property of inverse functions. In either directions, f comp f inverse or f inverse comp f have to equal x. Otherwise, the functions are not inverses of each other. Okay, so um, let's look at um, another example and find the inverse function. And um, we can also check whether it's um, the two functions are inverses of each other. Okay, so let's look at um, if you have any preferences. So let me ask you this, would you like to see another example? of how to determine the inverse function, or you would like to move on to other examples, other situations. Is anyone there? Anyone listening? Anyone? I'll give anything to hear voice. Anything. Anyone? Can um, we do another example? Another problem with the uh, finding the inverse? Yes. Excellent. Uh, any preference on, on the type of function? Of course, it has to be one-to-one. -one. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, okay, let's look at another linear function. So let's say, can, you make, can anyone make up uh, a linear function for us? Any. Or a rational function. Let's say uh, 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. Rational functions are 1 to 1. So step number 1, we replace f of x by y. In step number 2, we swap x equals 2y minus 1 over y plus 1. In step 3, because it's a rational equation, we will cross multiply. It's a proportion also. Um, 
cross multiply x multiply by y plus 1 equals this product, which is 2y minus 1. I will distribute because it's, I have to solve for y. xy plus x equals 2y minus 1. Again, I'm solving for y. I'm going to move this term here and this term here. And I have xy minus 2y equals negative x minus 1. Because I, I want to solve for y, but these are not like terms. I have to factor out y. And I divide by x minus 2. And that is it. So in step 4, I have f inverse of x as being negative x minus 1 over x minus 2. I could pull out negative 1 in front, and then I get x plus 1 over x minus 2. Of course, the domain does not accept 2, of course. 2 is not in the domain, and here we should have written that the domain of that function cannot have negative 1. One last concept here before we look at another example is When we graph, so note, graph, graphs of f and its inverse, f inverse, are symmetric. We're not talking about odd or even. They are symmetric. WRT with respect to the line y equals x. So here we're not talking about odd or even. We're talking about graphing x and y, um, uh, the function and its inverse on the same coordinate system. So whenever I graph or I'm asked to graph, um, the function and the inverse on the same coordinate system, I have to first draw y equals x, and then I will graph f and f, f and f inverse symmetric with respect to this line. So for example, and we are going to see this graph in chapter 4. This is the graph of a function and this is f, and this is one-to-one -one by the horizontal line test. Its inverse function will be perfectly symmetric with respect to y equals x. So this point moves across symmetrically across from um, um, y equals x, exactly where this one is. This one moves exactly symmetrically the same distance from y equals x, and so on and so forth, all of them, because, simply because. Let's go back to our bubbles. Let's say 1 corresponds to 10. 5 corresponds to 11. So this is function f, and this is its inverse, f inverse. The points for f, the points for f are 1 comma 10. And what is the other? 5 comma 11. But what are the points for f inverse? The points for f inverse will be 10 comma 1. That's 1, and 11, 5. So see what happens? The x and y coordinates are swapped. So for f, 1, 10. For f inverse, 10, 1. And that's exactly what happens. That's why the two graphs will be always symmetric with, the, with the respect to y equals x. So if the domain of function f and the range of function f. So for example, this is how we normally write it. f is defined on a 
taking values on B. So this is the domain and this is the range. Obviously F inverse will be defined on B and taking values on A. This will be the domain and this will be the range. If this is A, this is B. So A, a function F has domain A and range B. Function F inverse has domain B and range A. So that's what happens uh, with those graphs. So we have uh, several uh, problems like uh, this one. We are given the graph. We are asked to graph the inverse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw y equals x and just reverse the points. So this point, which is 0, 1, it will go here, 1, 0. This point that is negative 2, 4 will be at 4, negative 2. And that's the uh, theory behind um, inverse functions. Um, I would like to look at um, a word problem here, like let's say 67, to further understand the inverse function. So we're given a graph in 67. I'm just going to try to mimic it something like this. They give here number of people and they give here probability. So let's read the problem and see what it means, what they want us to do. They say the graph represents the probability of two people in the same room sharing a birthday so, in other words, if we have 30 people in the room, the probability, according to the graph, is 0.7. So, if we have 30 people in, in, a, in a classroom, the probability is about 70% that two of us, two of the 30 people, will share the same birthday, not the same year, but the same birthday. April the 1st. Okay, so explain why F has an inverse that is a function, because by the horizontal line test is 1 to 1. So in part A, F is 1 to 1. That's why F inverse exists. Describe in practical terms the meaning of F inverse of 0.25, f inverse of 0.5, and f inverse of 0.7. So the function when x is 30, I get 0.7 at the output. But when I apply the inverse function, I'm starting with this one because I talked about that point. When I apply the inverse function to 0.7, I get 30 people. What does that mean? So if I want to know how many people I should have in the room according to the model to guarantee a 70% success, 70% probability that two of the people in the room share the same birthday, for 70%, F inverse of 70% will be 30. Let's say if we only want 50%, if we only want 50%, then it's about 22. So if this is 22 and this is 0.5%. So F inverse of 0.5 is 22 people. And for 25%, for 25%, roughly 15 people. So it's analyzing the function going backwards. Okay, so I'm going to